Roll call. You have everybody listed fully. Roll call. Do the retainer. 
thousand dollars for the additional work that was causing that the uh, historic windows caused me. I had a letter for you to sign, but it didn't have all the wording that I need to have in it yet. Uh, it has to mention the uh, Kansas State Historical Society and um, Secretary of Interior Standards. It's a similarity to that that includes the, uh, the stadium. So um, that's kind of, I've got to go back to, to the drawing board on that. But uh, I think I'm, I'm done with the drawings, and, well, mostly done with the drawings and, and plans. There are, there are a couple of uh, items that need to be taken care of, like um, the windows on the west side need to have uh, glass that will allow light through in such a manner that blind people trying to play basketball in the late afternoon. That's just one of the things that uh, I don't know if you've noticed that on that, on that west side the windows have been painted out so that they are uh, opaque and it keeps the sunshine from when you're coming down looking for the basket and, and uh, they're sunning your eyes, it's, it's not very good, so we're going to do something with that. Uh, just, it's just a note that I've got to put on the plans. Um, we've got the historical windows shown, and we don't call them historical, we call them compatible. They cannot, from a distance, look like they might be historical, but um, a historical window would actually emulate the, the trim and the, uh, the type of material and, and all those kinds of things. So we're not doing historical windows, we're doing compatible windows, which just kind of take on the pattern of the original windows and doors. Um, windows and doors, well, uh, like the doors we talked about today, um, we're using a door that is, uh, has a two foot by three foot opening in the top, uh, a glass panel in the top, which we temper. Um, and I was telling Joe what kind of door it was, and he said, well, what happened if I kick it? And I thought we'd probably get in trouble. Uh, but I think what he was fishing for was, is it going to dent the door? And uh, these are FRP doors, so they've got a panel on it that, uh, you know, you can hit with a hammer and it doesn't hurt. Uh, they're also insulated and they're thermally broken as are and the uh, the frames aren't thermally broken they're thermally improved which means um, there is a connection from the exterior to the interior but it's it's insulated in between uh, it doesn't it doesn't stop the flow through the edge but it stops it keeps the air out of the middle and so it's you know it's not perfect, but it's it's the best we can do. Um, I have a specification. I'm going to get this up to you so that you can review it. But we kind of need to decide on uh, days to uh, advertise and. Um, I can write something out for you so that you can have a, a blurb. Now we're going to go out for bid shortly. And we're bidding the windows, doors, and the metals on the three sides of the building. Correct. So that's kind of what we're doing for you. Make sure that we're all on the same page. <coughs> yeah. I think so. I think so. I just don't think it's reasonable. Within reason of what you're thinking. Okay. Well, now, Reed has, has done his own price. And it's like
actually do a, uh, an estimate on what it would cost to, to replace the limits. They were $160,000. Um, I'm changing from what they were going to do because in order to keep from screwing up the bricks on the east and west end, because that, that yellow brick is hard to match, um, I'm having them remove those lentils from the inside of the building. So that's going to add cost to the project. So they'll shore up the wall, take off the brick on the interior, slide the lentils out, everything goes appropriately, and um, then slide in the new lentils. And uh, all the brick on the outside should stay in place. That's if everything goes well. It, it's is, uh, this, this is all subject to change. The uh, contractors may say I'm crazy and that this can't be done, but we're no worse off than we were before if they do something that. I just, I just got to hear it from, and that, that kind of stuff is discovered in the pre bid meeting, something we're going to set a date on today as well. Um, so I'm guessing that the uh, that method of removal is going to cost $32,000 more. That's $2,000 per opening more. Um, one thing that they didn't do in their bid was use galvanized lentils. And um, when I priced these lentils, uh, I priced them as galvanized and they're about $5,000 more to have the galvanization down on the lentils. So there's another 5,000. That's for the entire price. Um, Emory Glass has given um, a price for the windows, and they had some, they were quite a bit more expensive than what I was coming up with, and the reason for that was, um, if you remember, the windows that are there have four panels. I mean, you've got, um, like there's a triple window, which has three windows side by side, but each window has four panels up and down. So they were, they were copying that pattern. That is quite a bit more expensive because every time you have a, a mullion through there, there's, there's more cost, and they have a couple windows in there too. Um, our window for the compatible window is um, less expensive because it is it's a single hung window, and I mean, top panel is fixed, the bottom panel slides up and down, and um, that means it's only one uh, horizontal thing there. So. You have a less you have less metal, therefore less cost in the windows. And um, did that mean to the historical side? Yeah, that, they they want that. In fact, originally they told us that since the ones were there, this is six years ago when we started, <coughs> that they had to go back like they are. And now they're saying that they want it back to look at story like it was originally. So that's originally they were double hung. Just like you have in your house. Mm -hmm. So 
the this one is the door in the north, the other door in the north. That's getting reinstalled in the base bed and replaced in uh, in ultra bed number two. So and those those kind of things can be cleared up in an addendum. So I'm not too worried about those kind of things. But they are just kind of slow and difficult to Uh, lintel and just sat there and rotted. And uh, 
I just want to make sure somebody. <laughs> well, sure. You, you assume that they got inspected, <laughs> but I just want to make sure that we yeah. didn't have. Uh, yeah, I asked the guy, that, and he's a stonemason, but I'm not a steel structural person. But I asked him to please look at all of them and check them out. We saw any of them that he thought were really bad, you know, deteriorating. Let me know. He said that he thought that they all were. Yeah. And just on the interior, it looked better. I mean, there's no, like on the other ones, you can see where that water's softened all the plaster and everything on the interior, and so a lot of that stuff has been falling off. So, um, this. This won't stop the water in the wall from coming down, but it will be impervious, close to impervious, uh, if it does come down, because it will be galvanized, plus it will be covered with a uh, uh, waterproof membrane. So um, it's still going to require that we maintain the walls at that point and waterproof those walls and make sure that those things are, are kept tight. Um, because that just ruins your masonry. And you know, you got you done great well, or when they got away, but uh, you know, this has been going on for thirty years with the water down on the wall and it's, uh, it's, it's had some you can see some very severe cracks in the, the big walls themselves. I mean, nothing but Causing the building to be questionable structurally, but it is uh, it is where things had in the past got watered in, and there are places to pay attention to now. Um, and you know, waterproofing, the kind of cleaning uh, should probably happen about every seven years. And uh, at that point, just you know, when, when you waterproof, there's miscellaneous tech point that needs to happen every seven years. It just kind of the front of the building was just that point. It was clean. It was sealed about three months ago, just before winter. So the front, I think, other than the windows and doors, should last 10, 20 years before we think about anything. So, and of course, you can't guarantee anything past that. You need to just plan ahead that sometime in the near future you're going to be the waterproof and duck pointing on the east, north, and uh, west side of the road. So anyway, um, all told, if, if you would do everything on this project, I'm guessing that it would come in around um, $253,000. Uh, not with any contingency, so I don't have any, like, uh, I would like to have like 10% on top of that, another $25,000 on top of that, just to kind of hedge my bet. Um, so it could be 275 something like that, um, for everything. Two hundred thousand 
two rooms for 100,000. Well, that's what we budgeted, and that doesn't mean that's just 20000 under the other. Well, I mean, it's like dispersed over the course of 21, two families. 21629 is this budget balance. You can't approve it.
have that, and that will be ready the following Monday. And the it will be a week later, and that's on a Tuesday. And then the bid would be on the 7th, which is a Tuesday as well. Now, what, that's a Thursday. Yeah. And I think you guys are here on Monday, Monday Wednesday. Let's move that to the 6th. Yeah. I don't know if that's something that you guys want to open up here or how you do that. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll advertise on the 15th, which is a Saturday. It goes out to bed on the 18th, which is a Monday. The previous conference will be on Tuesday the 26th, and that will be at the Patton uh, Memorial Hall. And they will receive this on the 6th of March. Does that work for everybody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I try to make it at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So it's. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd probably suggest it slightly just step back from the start of the Okay. I've never been out there. I don't know what's there. 
Yes, you can get that at Terry Guns. I mean, I've tried it before. It's not a lot better than this gray oil based enamel uh, floor paint, but it is just one step up from that. So that just kind of so you wash it? Yeah, which we never did. We never washed it inside. We, we washed it. And that's the purpose of the paint that area. So what's well, one of the reasons?
figures to match. Oh, correct. I know, but I don't, I don't know what he... I mean, you yeah. know, to, to come back later with $9,000 short, okay, where is it? Rogers at 26. I know we had some savings there, but by not replacing <coughs> Tony, to correct. I don't think Tony's figures, I think Tony was at 37. That was pulled off the budget.
schedules, I guess you get clearance. Yep. To offer. We'll offer. Generate some interest income down the road might help 
maintain the riverfront and expand the riverfront because from day one, one of the things we wanted to do and what we envisioned was to take this trail all the way out, tie into the levee, come across, which makes a huge loop uh, that you can then come back on uh, 2nd Street, Highway to 2nd Street, which opens up a lot of variety for tourism, for um, bike uh, meets and, and walking racing uh, meets, that type of thing, to bring more people into the community. So one of the things we want to do is to extend this. Unfortunately, we ran out of time and out of money when we were going to the riverfront. We ended up with a $4.2 million project and we were going to need about another million to try and wrap the whole thing up and we just didn't have the time to generate good funds. Then, uh, financial issues hit the country and the earmarked funds, those types of monies that you would normally go after for the trails, right up. They just weren't available. We're in a unique situation right now with the states and with the funding. Um, they've got to terminate this program, is my understanding, and they've got funds that they've got to expend. This may be one of our last shots at getting the money to complete this trail. We understand time stuff. We know that. Um, it's a city county project that we hope the county could participate in. A, there's going to be there's a lot of entities grabbing for these dollars. The reason we're trying for 30 percent match is that kind of moves it to the head of the class. If everybody else is just coming in with 20, it shows that there's a commitment from the community that goes over and above what is required in the grant application. We've talked with Trey. The committee's met, and I'm here today to try and see what we can do jointly that might ease some of the burden from the, uh, from the county of coming up to $100,000 to $125,000. But at the same time, may help push this thing to the 30% match that we're hoping to get so that we can really get this trail funded and completed. The Riverfront Committee is, has met and we would be willing to contribute up to $50,000 of the county's portion um, to help meet your obligation so that you're not staring down the barrels of $100,000 to $125,000 coming from the county. Uh, the project is one I think is really needed for the community. We have an asset that very few com communities in the state or across the nation actually have. We have enhanced what we do have, and this just takes it one step further. Uh, it really is a draw to people coming into the community. People come into the community so spend dollars, dollars from uh, taxes, taxes that help spread through the county to improve roads, bridges, other assets that the county and the city need to maintain. Um, the other thing it does, because I have some friends that are farmers, they use that road a lot. They have in the past expressed concern to me about walkers and bikers and uh, some of the issues that creates for them uh, when they've got big green trucks and they're trying to get in and get out uh, on the roadway. This takes the tourists, the people in the community and in the county that use the bike path, it takes them off the road. My understanding is the city has agreed to maintain the, the uh, road once it's sort of the path. The trail. I <laughs> 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 uh, want to see it. So on behalf of the committee, um, like I said, we would be willing to try and help if, if $50,000 would help the county to look towards making a contribution. We would go ahead and make that, that uh, stipulation today that we would receive $50,000. I'd be glad to answer any questions that anyone might have. Well, I believe it was told we didn't have to make a dollar commitment at this point. And that's the reason I put up this idea. And, and, and tell what changes to me until we see where we are in m and &E, I can't even commit a, a penny. And if we come up with the m, it, it, the m &E does get us like we think it's going to, we may be in a better position. And I guess Commissioner Bodenhouse, and that's why I go back to you. I mean, is it a good point or not? I mean, what, I've got to answer to my constituents about that. That if I have to commit, and, and I, I, I guess Commissioner, what we would tell you is if the M and E happens, this whole project goes off the table. If M and E happens, this whole project goes off the table. Some of M and E is going to happen because I've been in contact. Something's going to happen. It may not be to the magnitude that they originally sent, but if we lose six or eight percent of our valuation. That to me is significant. <coughs> well, 
mean, what what are we tying in? I mean, what are we what are we talking about? I mean, if, if M and E doesn't happen, then I'm ready. But the so but, 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 but sir, look like the, then the project's done. I mean, we either get the grant or we don't. This is the last time they're going to offer it. Well, I understand that. So you sometimes got to take a leap of faith to do something cool for the county. That I mean, you sometimes have to take a leap of faith yeah. and be out there. Okay. So we're we're talking about this helping the county. Absolutely. Think. Okay. In terms of well, number one, we've had a developer in town recently, commissioner, who didn't like what he sees in this community. Really likes what he sees in this community. And I believe the riverfront was one of those things. And he and you know, even extending that and make those properties, you know, worth more, make it better for those developers to come in. I mean, and this guy's talking about doing some major developments in the city, um, if we can get them landed. But you know, that's property tax value that you know, that's gonna help raise raise all ships in the county. It's gonna it could. Well could. I mean it should. It should. I mean, I, I think you can see what the riverfront's done for us right now, and, and it's helped the entire county. I mean, look at the amount of road and bridge tax that's paid in by the city of Ashton that's dispersed all over the county. I mean, I believe 60 some percent of the road and bridge tax is paid from the city of Ashton and spent all over the county. How do you figure that? 60 percent of the valuation for the county lies within the city. Right, right. It's going to change drastically. We'll be 50 50 in a year. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's great, but it, it's just, <coughs> you know, th those red and bridge dollars are spent outside the city. Well, I have and, a question why this project costs as much. When we're doing a 26 foot stretch for 225000 Number one, this is a turnkey project. And on your project, you're just looking at material costs only for that project. Well, and so labor costs is uh, probably twice as much. And that's a four hundred to five hundred thousand for twenty six foot or twenty four foot. That's building. for a bed that's already there. Pardon? That's for well, a we have to dig it out okay. and put ten inches of rock in. And you know, these are these are engineer estimates. I'm I'm a county resident. I am not a city resident. Okay? So one of your uh, commissioners came and got my signature on his petition. I'm a county resident. I donate in Atchison all the time. We had such a hard time getting the county to be involved in the Independence Creek Trail, and it is all county. Every bit of it. Part of it's in Donovan County, but that was part of the problem. But, you know, I don't understand why my county can't give 50000 when the riverfront that we've gotten donations from private individuals to make this foundation are going to donate the same. I just don't get it. I mean, I pay taxes and all that, too, both inside and outside the city. I guess I just don't understand when it's the last time they're going to have it, and Hiawatha just got seven hundred and something thousand dollars out of this thing last year, that Atchison is sitting here, and they don't even have a riverfront. So I, I you know, as, an, as a county person, I have a problem with it. You know, I know we need roads and bridges. I live on a dirt road. I get dusted every time I drive on it. Our bridge is going to fall down one of these days, trust me, on 256 roads. But these are the kind of things that bring people to my community, and that's what is important to me. Then we can fix all these things. I, that's how I feel. Thank you. Economic development, quality of life. Quality of life is such a key thing when we look at bringing people to town. They want to know what's here. What's going to keep... Companies are going to Kansas City right over left over right. Why? Because the quality of life is there. They have the trails. Go down to Johnson County. That's where everybody wants to be. Drive around Johnson County and see the arboretum, the trails, and everything else. And that's where people want to be. And, and taxes, Overland Park's mill loving is cheaper than Atchison, but when you look at comparable house from Atchison, what it would cost in Overland Park, you're going to pay more on taxes. But people are willing to do that because of the amenities that exist down there. And this is an amenity that helps us compete not only regionally, but, or not only in this area, but regionally. I mean, yeah, and ask why do we need a dollar commitment now when you told For me the grant application, because I, you told me before we didn't need one. I, I was hopeful that we wouldn't need one, but when we found, talked to the grant writer, to get us that percent, we need a, we need a dollar commitment. 
Yeah, yeah. Let me explain that because Bob and I were very involved in that because we did we got PE funds for the river fronts. I mean, we got to try to get funds for anywhere we could get funds. We knocked on our senators and representatives' doors a million times trying to get more. Um, because 4.2 was hard for that the community batches in Kansas, not the county, the community to raise. I mean, it was near impossible. But what they do is 20% is the minimum. The more match you have the higher up in the ranking you get, even before they read your application. Because what you want to be is at the top so that you get the money. If you're at the bottom and they've got a choice between someone with 30 or 40 percent match and you're at 20, the 30 and 40 percent match you can get the funds. Unfortunately, it's just the way it is. And I mean, we know that from, from doing very fun. It's tough. It's tough to get grant funds. And we I can't, still don't know how high And we can't quantify it will help you if M&E doesn't get we can't quantify that and put that in the grant application. Sorry, I mean, I would, I would love to. Hey, well, the county's willing to help. I help hope, us. <clears throat> I hope I'm a businessman. And you know, the only thing see the difference I am is I represent so much rural people. And if I committed that, and then we had a budget shortfall, and I had to cut some things from the rural part, you know, I'm toast. And realizing that I understand everybody's stretched for dollars. And that was the main reason that the Riverfront Foundation had no intention of committing any, <coughs> any close to this type of funds for any project for at least about another five to ten years for trying to build the principal. This is an opportunity that comes around that looks like but once more time, at least for the foreseeable future until the economy turns around and maybe generates a few more dollars. I understand your problems. I I, I went to Trey, I said Trey, the city Let's face it, the riverfront development is going to benefit the city as well as the county. Take another look, the trade commissioners did, and they went and they come up with additional funds on their end. I then went with Karen to our committee and said, folks, this is our last chance. Now, we can save money for a rainy day when we may need it. And when that rainy day comes, it will be there. If the rainy day never comes, we got money sitting there that we could have put to good use. This is the last opportunity we have to finish out a project that we started back in 2004, 2002. Um, it, 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 to bring 50,000 to the county, to double it with the county, gets us to the 30% match and allows us to go to the top of the list and go get a project finished that does benefit the county. I mean, it's not going to hurt the county. Yeah, it's, it's not going to hurt the county at all. Sure. My, you remember my comment. I just strongly support it. I just don't want to support something that I can't. I mean, it's kind of like saying I'll marry you or go tell somebody to marry you and then you decide you can't get the money and you can't get married or something. I don't want to get in that position. Now, that's the problem I have with this. And, and on the economic development, you, you're betting on the company. There's no question. I mean, I can't sit here today and quantify for you if you put up fifty thousand dollars what that will generate in additional tax revenue dollars. I can't. I can stand here today and tell you it will generate more. It will expand the base. It will bring more people in. It is a long-term commitment that will help the entire committee or community because we can build upon from this point. The more you get in, the more people come in. The more you get an energy going. And people here to come in. You know, we've seen it even just with the riverfront. The amount of people that are starting to come just to see the riverfront. The attraction is for the younger population, especially which is coming up, their their eco concerns. It's a wonderful place as a tourism destination. They can put their bikes on here. They can bring their kids up because the first ride. If you don't come down Second Street, this is going to be what a five six mile ride that is flat. I mean, you put your kids on your bikes and you can take off. It is a wonderful opportunity to expand the base of this community for people coming in, leaving dollars here, and then leaving the community. So you don't have uh, the, the, the problems with your insurance structures not being able to handle more population because they're coming and staying and you have to have better roads, better sewers. You don't have that problem. They come, they invest their dollars for entertainment purposes, and they leave. It's, it, it's a win-win for the community. Yeah. Um, and Two points. Um, this county was recently ranked dead last <laughs> in half. And I know I'm not the poster child 
for what a healthy individual should look like. But this community was dead last. Wasn't the city of Ashton that was ranked dead last. Wasn't the community, it was Ashton County. This is something that would benefit the county from that standpoint and having that healthy alternative there. Also, um, if they get more active in PE, that would help. More what? Mm -hmm. If we have if our PE classes would be a little more active, I think that's, that's what we're getting at. I mean, adults would be responsible. I mean, I understand that this is There's a lot of adults out there that are. I yeah. understand what I'm saying is, is so to get a kid motivated today to go ride the bike trail, I can see an adult doing it more so. And that's where a lot of our focus is. I see it in rural areas. I mean, we have kids that don't do chores. I mean, they don't have anything to do but to go ahead and play on the computer. So, I mean, it, it's a little bit of a culture of a lifestyle change. I mean, that's how are we going to get them to do that? I don't know. This will help, I understand, on the adult side. I mean, that's, that's the reason I'm supporting this more tall. The thing is because when I found out how many people do that are tall, you know, that's a week. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty significant. What, what's kind of like the timeline like going forward as far as like dollars? Is this like for 2014? Yeah. I mean, 14. Timeline right now is. Yeah, I, I'm really I'm trying to think of what's a win-win situation, and that you don't feel like you're hanging out there. What about if you commit this, but if something happens, you can default, you know? You, and no, and it doesn't. I'm not talking about it. Oh boy, the bad, the bad yeah, county. I, yeah, I, I hate well, that. if you do, then they what they do. We know because we had people not finish <coughs> their donations to the riverfront. There weren't as many as six thousand dollars, but um, they could go back to the grantor and you say, "Hey, our county got in trouble. They can't do that extra match. You still had the fifty and the hundred and sixty-five, and they'd probably approve it. And if they didn't, the city yeah. figure something well, out. And that's where I, I mean, we just need we county it. base here. We yeah. need and your and support. That's where I would much rather be. I know you're reluctant to commit anything. I mean, I. We, I I'd promise rather, you all, I won't badmouth you. But, you know, I, I'd rather have the 50 in the... Just call me. Okay. <laughs> hey, I, I've trained and trained. I've trained and trained. He's already done. He's just trying to be good. I'm Mike, okay? That's trained Mike. Okay. And, and somebody told me a long time ago, and take this right or wrong, it's sometimes it's nice to call a commissioner when you sit in that seat because you make those decisions that yeah. Mike necessarily wouldn't make. I look at this, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, um, at the end of the day, I'd love to, I'd love to be sitting here in May. The county doesn't want to pay their 50000 bucks. we got to work and come up with 50000 bucks somehow, then not get the grant because we were only at 20%. I'd much rather be in the position where I have to find 50000 bucks because then it happened than not get the grant and not and go home. I agree. I mean, that's good. Because that, that's our other option. We're, we're at the same, we're at the 80 20 level, same as everywhere. I understand the position you guys are in, too. They yeah. both be kind of squeezed. And hey, you know, this, I mean, yeah, there are streets that, but at the end of the day, you know, as we look at, as we look at a project and as we look at certain things, Commissioner, you know, Mike. Mike. <laughs> it's training. I tell you, it's embedded training. I, I don't know that I can shake it. He's on right in front. Mike did the talk, so I'll speak up. Uh, like Ms. Seaberg said, she is in my district. I uh, cherish what your families did for the city. But if m &E does come in and we are forced to do more with less, to me, my number one objective is public safety. And I don't have a problem with that. If it comes in, what they're trying to tell you is, if you if you give if you commit it now, and we know that M and E comes in, and we all are on the same page, and we've gotten a grant, the fifty thousand will materialize. The, it won't materialize beforehand to go in and get the grant. I think that's what I'm trying to tell you. And I mean, I've been gotten real savvy after trying to do the riverfront. We we had to. Rob Peter and pay Paul. I mean, not in a bad, illegal sense, but in just trying to figure out how to do it. And I totally know where you are, okay? And I'm not mad. Time. I just no, don't want no, to get it no. done. And I understand exactly, and, and, and I like Bill, I know how much you're Yeah, I know. I mean, just, I mean this isn't that. a lot of money, and if it can't come in, then it can't come in. I mean. And as of now, the M&E &E isn't. 
So you're not making a commitment. When it's a problem. When it's a problem. And that's important for if we do need to go back to, to the grant people. That's right. Secondly, what's more important is that we show a broad-based county and community support Financial as opposed support. to just the city or just the city. It community. makes our grant so much more competitive if there is a three-legged stool sitting under it exactly. with city support, with county support, and with private support. And we're the grantee. I mean, we would be the grantee. You're not obligated. I mean, if you say, look, we just can't do it. I mean, that's at that point our problem to figure out, honestly. We're the ones that would be accepting the grant, not the county. I think what we're trying to be, we're trying to be honest with you. You know, right now we don't know what's coming about. Uh, I'm not 100% committed because we don't know. And if this jeopardizes public safety, uh, for example, last week we voted Trio to spend 40000 on a road, but there's been major accidents, and, and there's no doubt in my mind that 40000 that we are going to spend is going to save lives. And, and the public safety. And, Mr. and I can argue the same thing. I, I've been on that road. I've been riding my bike on that road. I've had kids, grain trucks coming down the road. River Road. It, it's a dangerous situation. I, I can't. I can't say fifty thousand bucks is a gate. I wouldn't argue that. I mean, it, it's a dangerous road. I mean, I think there is a public safety element in there, too, Commissioner. I guess, Commissioner, we get this pledge out of you guys. Fifty thousand. If the legislature doesn't, doesn't. <laughs> so that is it 50 or 70? You said with 120? Because you think come up with 160. Oh, okay. I'd be happy with, I mean, I, I'd love 120, but at the end of the day, 50 would make it work. But you know, if, if, if some other thing materialized, I do 120. But, uh, you know, I think. Right that damn straight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, a pledge of $50,000 yeah, is still. stick by it. I mean, certain things are going to happen. We'd have a, a, a decent, you know, uh, that if it didn't happen and this and that, then we'd be in a lot better, a lot better shape. Uh, but well, uh, is, is there a possibility then we could get you to commit? If, I mean, with the caveat that if M and E happens, that we have to go raise that fifty. Because here's the thing, and I know from doing these things, they're going to ask us. They're going to ask you, Becky. Why is the county not supporting this financially when half of the trail is on you the county? Let me go talk to KDOT, okay? Cause I, no, I, but I know, but that's what they're going to ask. And it's not KDOT that makes the decision, it's their committee well, that gets yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. So minutes. could you do that and just say, if anything happens, you guys better... Because yeah, I, I can handle that. valuation more than 2%, and I'm okay saying more than 2%, you guys are out. And, and I understand that. Because you guys have a larger chunk of, of the county. And I, we can work with that sort of sort of letter, and then we can work, that helps us work with M&E and the legislature, we're saying, hey, the county's elected to fund this stuff, I mean, it, it makes conversations with our senators and representatives go so much easier, no, no, no. We can't control, we can't control M&E, I mean, yeah. it's, it's good, it's some, it's whatever happens, it happens with it, and, you know, I, I think that there's some points that, you know, all three of us have a portion of this trail in our, in our district, so it does affect all three of us, um, and I said, I'm supporting this. Just that I hate. Get reduced to writing. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me just tell you this because I mellowed just a little bit on this today because we did have a little good meal. Something brought up. You know, we, if we get more more halt, I mean, we possibly have some tax credits. And I would not be opposed to applying them to that. I don't think we can do that. But that's not quite fixing it. I mean, that's what it is. We've got to redo each road. We've got to do <laughs> Come on now, what are you going to bid? Buy. <laughs> <laughs> now we're asking for $15,000. I know she's going to put budget. I think that I'm listening. I'm not a political person, as you can tell. As I sat here and listened, they're asking you to make a commitment that's a non commitment. I mean, you're not out of penny. If something changes that causes you to not be able to fund the 50000 Is that fair enough? I mean, so, and, and my vantage point, the reason, I know why we're doing this, and the reason is we really need to show that the county has verbally committed finances to the program. Now, that may change, not because of anything the county does. But, 
as I sit and listen to you all, if M and E doesn't happen, the 50,000 isn't a problem. I mean, is that a fair statement? I, I would be, I would be okay. And my I point, that and my point is, sitting here today, that's the situation you're in. Now, M and E may, may not happen. Everybody has their own beliefs and opinions and assumptions. It happens. And based on today's fiscal condition, we're asking that you commit $50,000. And we know, from what I listen to the parties here, we know that if the state changes something that creates a financial impact to you that is not currently existing, that that may in turn change your position on all of the 50000 part of the 50000 whatever. But if we have that commitment as of today, we can get the application in with the full consent of all three parties. And honestly, we still have to accept the application if it is successful. We have to accept the funds. That's true. I mean, if anything happens, we're in a world of hurt, too. I don't know that we'd be in a position to accept it. I think, you know, that, that's the problem with India. I thought the same thing as we furnish hell. We can't do that. That's what I'm saying. That would be one of the things that if M&E did happen, that would be a great tool to go back to KDOT with and say, hey, you know, county can't fund out of pocket because this has happened, but they're willing to lay down to some plenary workers, you know. This is related to this trick. Okay. Has your engineer and stuff looked at knowing what we're going to do? Are they taking into consideration that we're doing work not too far away from there and planning to hook into what we're going to see? We're probably going to be putting that hill or CD, I mean, when it's wet, you know what I mean? That's part of the reason we have problems that road. And we're going to do some little farmer style stuff. That's why we put 10 inches of it on the base. We're going to put some tile in there. Are you guys considering anything bad on your bike trail just to make sure that there's, when we cross that with a tile, that you, you know? Yeah, we have a lot of, if you see, there's a lot of five minute stuff in the project. Because you knew we were talking about delaying that River Road project to 2014 good size. And you guys aren't using stamp drawings for your project, right? You guys aren't having, that's what we, your project engineered, are you? No. We'll get Dave to talk to Matt and figure out what they're doing. I just hate to get in there. Yeah, I mean, we have money for, you know, once again, we haven't designed the project. We haven't designed the project. This is just a plenary estimate using the best known values that we have at this time. Once we get the grant approved, at that point, we start the design work, and that's where Dave would sit down with Matt and really try to get a good understanding of what's happening. So how soon can you do that? Today? I just hate these. I like to go home and not sleep at night. You don't have to worry, because you'll know if anything happens. You're not going to sleep anyway. If you knew what I went through the first two months I came on the job, the ambulance people said they wanted out of business. When I went to the multi-county health department, it was going broke by the first of July if we didn't do something. That happened all within the first month. So you've got to understand a little bit why I'm a hesitant. Because, I mean, when you get those situations thrown blindsided, that's what concerns me just a little bit. Commissioner, I've been doing it for six and a half years. I mean, as a manager. And I understand how life happens. I understand how life can kick your butt at some point. But I also know that sometimes... You've got to be able to pick yourself back up. And you've just got to do it. I understand. I understand. Well, you know, I guess I changed my tune because I was going to stick with my boat. But when I realized we were going to get these tax credits or something, you know, I wouldn't be afraid to commit that much. But I don't know. Fifteen thousand bucks on top of your tax credits over there. I'd have to dig in the budget somewhere. I guess we... I'm assuming that we have support of citizens. And obviously we've got people that are... This is unbelievable. Yeah, I know. 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 Yeah,
I mean, we have gone and talked with Rotary, Kiwanis, uh, we can the hospital, uh, get well, Ashton, I can't think of what it's called, but... Live well. <laughs> I mean, live well, live well, Ashton. Uh, you know, we talked to why, I mean, the schools, everyone is very And honestly, this. some very anti-government, anti... this type of project? I like this project. I've heard of one person who's in your district <laughs> who's actually opposed to the project. Well, I, yeah, I'm sure there's, there's, there'd be more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying actually opposed to the project. And, and that's probably the difference I bring. I mean, I, I have to listen to her and you have to, you know, whatever. And there's a number you can get that you want with those calls. Really it. Yeah. You know, can all be shown. You can set up your cell phone so when it calls, it says this number's no longer taken, except you can call from this number. I do have color ID. There you go. <laughs> I know who we're talking about. I guess I'll, Rick and I and a bunch of us are going to just have to hold him down. <laughs> and remind him how much we support him on stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who you're talking about, but I think I do. <laughs> but I can, take, I can take you to three or four. Yeah. I'm sure that there's... <laughs> he's over... He's from one side, but there is that mentality out there. Maybe not quite as much as Just make this good, committed non-commitment. Yeah. And then we'll I do you understand your concerns. I really do. Yeah. But yeah. it's a it's a commitment that if, if your worst nightmares occur, or even your not worst, but some bad ones occur, you're not committed. I mean, it, it, you're not committed down the road yeah. if, in yeah. fact, yeah. circumstances yeah. change. So what's the point of the What? I'm not joking. Did you So more than two percent. Evaluation down more than two percent. You also have an increase. I mean, you can back out regardless. You're not. I mean, you're under no legal obligation to provide the funds. But yeah, I would say a quick story about our profession. Occasionally, guys who are what Bob used to be attorneys get hired as city managers. Usually they don't make the best city managers because they're so afraid of risk that they never do anything. They're so afraid to take that step because of what might happen. And, you know, that, that's great and you need that attorney telling you what those risks are. But, you know, I could get hit by the car and a car going home so I better just stay at home today. You've got to take risk in your life. And risk, what risk comes? Reward. Reward. <laughs> We tried to do the Riverfront Project five times and it never happened until we did it. That's the truth, God's truth. Since 1950s, they tried to do it five times. And the only way we did it was, <laughs> uh, it, it was pretty scary, actually, but you just have to believe. The case can watch it. Yeah. Yeah.
been a board enforcement uh, change or Summer, mid summer maybe. What? And we should have the when when they announce. Grant should be after the legislative session. No. Yeah. So. I mean, grant work should come out after. I think they said mid summer. And well, I mean, we'll hold off exception until after the early legislative session. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, so you guys have time to budget for it in your 2014. Then. Yeah. Fifteen thousand bucks. Me personally, I'm, I'm fine with it. I mean, but I, I mean, I think there's been a big effort by the River Park Committee to step up and you know, push the burden. I think it would coincide with three of us having skin in the game to uh, to get some trails done. With. And it's it's a high traffic area. I mean, I think none of us are dying that. I mean, just with the M and E and the unknowns, I think we can't control we can't control that M and E. We gotta still proceed as though we're trying to improve the quality of life. Jeff, Mike, and Bill, do I have permission to treat you like I would treat my commission or the city commissioner real quick? Good question. <laughs> and say, Mr. Commissioner, so I would recommend that you pass a you pass a resolution saying that you support the project at fifty thousand, subject to a loss in valuation, or you guys look back out if you have a loss in valuation of more than two percent or something significant other otherwise material happened. And between now and we accept the grant.
the silver, and we pick up the pieces, try and salvage the grain, which we're going to try and do. What's critically important is that we can make a unified presentation that all parties, private, city, and county, are willing to make a significant contribution based upon what we know today. And if those, if that changes, you're free to say, I'm sorry, city and private citizens, as much as we'd like to do it, we've got safety and health concerns, we've got roads and bridges, we've got uh, loss of tax dollars, and we can't do it. So you're under no obligation, but you have the opportunity to help us benefit all the citizens of the county. I mean, to me, it's a it's a win-win, and I, I just don't see the downside. And we don't get the grant, and there's no, I mean, then we don't have to worry. Then we don't have to worry about. I mean, you know, if we can't apply for the grant, we can't put the pen. Then at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, hey, we can do 100 point now. That doesn't count, and we got to go too. We have a thank you. I hate to rush you guys, but we do have a special meeting tonight. Hey, we'll come back and get these tomorrow because there are massive projects here. Frank? Yeah. Have to text you on our decision. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Okay. 
standard with KDOT. Um, they did that, and I have a PO here for $2,241. Now, those uh, bridges were the bridges that have been replaced since the last bridge inspections and they had to have the loader in this down. We talked a little bit here in the court of I would like to see the part of the including to come up with like a three year work plan. Mm -hmm. So I think it would help you budget. I think it would help us see your wish list and see what needs to be replaced and that way we can start getting stuff on a mm -hmm. rotation. Yeah, I'm trying to work something up on that. Um, we're talking about more um, wide scope of everything, like what roads we want to work on, and bridges, and yeah, your equipment, 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 your equipment, your whatever. Yeah. Well, that's the part where I just pick on you, I like to see each part of that. Yeah, well, I understand that. Um, the equipment will be easy because I'm going to give you guys a tour, so that's what I'm just doing. Um, no, we, we do have a lot of equipment for this update. Do you good catch your? <laughs> I thought Matt would give me some. You kind of all that water. Well, I thought those were all the way.
the transfer station also reduced some of the county shop. I think the county shop, I mean, if you, if you that's where been out there, I mean, that's where the scrapper, I mean, machine is.
to collect later. So that will be what? on the purchase cards. Disney administration just on the bill. That will be. There was no decision. Yeah. I told you about it, but there was no decision. It might be gone that day. I mean, if it's disrupting stuff, I mean, I don't have a problem. You just got administration on his own. I mean, I don't see what. The GS is obviously his own. Yeah. You're accountable for that. Correct. So, yeah. That's, that's a different type of situation if you put general administration, I would say. Limit? I mean, I, have, I think I have to give them a limit. So. Yeah. Did you get a list of the limits? No, mm -hmm. For like everybody? So we. I don't even know what so it Didn't you say, Pauline, it was more the fact that the limit wasn't high enough than the location where the building was going? It was on his control account, but not enough for him. I mean, it was, he had already used all his, the limit on the control account. That's why he couldn't order anymore. And the control account is like, commissioners have control accounts, not the commissioners, but and you're, everybody's underneath of it. So the control account what actually is, um, the control account is less than, I think he had 20,000 on the control account and he was up to 19,000, so that's why he could. And they did say that you could limit it just to him increasing his own credit card limit. And they did recommend that you put a limit on his control account. Well, getting back to West, what he was talking about, I, I took it that he thought the, the problem was the, the different building location more than the limit. So if we raise the limit... Well, you can also, you can also tell him that um, he has the, has the option of changing the um, address. I think he was talking about the address. Yeah. When he charged it, he wanted to go to someplace else, and I wouldn't allow that because the billing Budget is budgeted about twenty four thousand, so 
when she had indicated that it was not going to be as difficult, it's just a matter of spending more time with the consolidated general plan. You have to have very good bookkeeping to make sure that when it comes time to report all that stuff, you can help it out. So, or close to So, suggestions? Or
when they go and look at those properties, if it is or if it isn't. So.
s'il vous plaît, Seigneur.